Well, we just finished loading everything up. 6 a.m. gonna make our way to Lawrenceburg, Kentucky. Um, day before archery opener down there, which is always the first Saturday in September. So leaving somewhat chilly weather here. It's only in the 60s. It's gonna be chillier than normal down there, which would be nice. It means the deer will be moving earlier on velvet. So just got pulled in to Kentucky here unloading the truck. Um, got a rental house, which is pretty darn close to Bootleggers Ridge Farm. And it's like a quarter mile away. So we're gonna get changed real quick. Uh, I'm gonna head to the farm, rebate all the stands, check cards. Opening day is tomorrow. It is midday, so it's perfect to get in there, mess around a little bit. Tonight we're gonna head over to Salt River Lodge. Swan Brothers are playing there for everybody. Kinda big opening day celebration. Let's just leave it at that. Garage is probably open, so I'm thinking it's not like turning it. And then some lady goes, Hey, you should really watch out what garages you walk into here. Yeah, don't go to the house and go in the garage that says, Don't tread on me with the NRA flag outside. just pulled into the stand that I was planning to hunt here. We're baiting it again today. We're gonna to pull the memory card. Um, up until about a week ago, there were two giants coming in here. One that had split brow tines and then a, a big eight. And they kind of uh, unfortunately disappeared over the last week. So we may get lucky, maybe they came in last night. If not, we'll keep, keep baiting it. Maybe they'll come in later in the season. But I had the stand all set up. It was gonna work out too good here. So George and Heath came in yesterday and swapped out the cell cam we had there and put just a regular trail cam. And then along the line here, they set up two other bait sites. So we know that big deer's in here somewhere, the split brow deer. There's Joey who, who uh, works at Salt River, leases next door here, and he's had them on his camera, but not regular. So our property line runs to the tree line up there and then it goes and it hits the tree line over here. This is Does that and then Jesse's right alongside you. But I um, just walk around the backside, Dad, so you can see where you walk into the stand at. Okay. Mother of pearl, that's the one thing you gotta watch about Kentucky the bugs. Yikes. Keep going farther down, Dad. There's been two giants here one we call it Unicorn, and then there's a just a mainframe 10 that's got a kicker off his G2. But the front of him comes to where he almost touches, and these guys have been like clockwork. The uh, Magic Mojo stuff out here. Buck Bourbon 110 went hit the market this year, and then we've got a test that we're doing of liquid called 120 proof. So we've been testing this all year. It's been working good, but this stuff, magic right here.
wind's kind of messing with the, what our plans are. Normally it's out of the south or some version out of the south, but today it's got a little bit of east in it. So it's kind of messing where dad may sit. We'll play this afternoon exactly okay. what the wind does. Uh, we'll have plenty of options after getting these stands up. <laughs> Just got the stands all set, put together. We're gonna load them up, head in. So we're working on getting a second stand set up right now. It may actually sit in this one tonight because he's still in velvet and he's the only deer left of shooters on the property that's in velvet. So we just may give him one try tonight while he's in velvet, let the stand set for a night that we put up for the split brow tine deer. It could be the plan if we get in and out of here quick enough. Pouring out some buck bourbon here. Gonna give it a couple hours and we'll sneak back in here today, see if we can't, can't still get him out before he loses that velvet. Are you really watching YouTube right now? How else am I gonna find it? Kids. So easy. I'm 23. Yeah. 23 with a Carolina 40 year old. Oh yeah, see this, this is different. Why is it? We're just heading into the stand we hung a couple hours ago and there's a big eight point in there and yesterday he was still in velvet, which is why we hung the stand. All the other deer that are shooters on the farm have dropped their velvet, so we're, we're giving it one sit for this guy probably before we switch tomorrow and go after double brow tine. Um, Dad and Jesse just took off. They used the golf cart. They're going to be hunting the other side of the farm, which the farm's extremely long. So it's like one mile from one side to the other. And we're on completely different sides from where we're at. We're just going to walk in from the barn, but we'll try to be fairly quiet. It's a good couple hundred yard walk, but we'll be fairly quiet from here on out. stands.
in real light and early. Or? That deer actually grows right at 160 because of the wow. beams. Um, just Mark saying, uh, if your wind's going this way or this way, I'm not sure, scratching the beard. Well, let's go back to the truck. I don't think it's much to move just yet. So we'll see what they say when we get here. It's gonna be real fun. Oh, wind direction, check. What are you gonna do, Mark? Go eat some Mexican food. Oh. After we got done feeding earlier today, about 30 minutes after checking the Exodus cameras, the unicorn buck came in. So we're gonna switch up the game plan. Instead of having Dad and Jesse drive the golf cart down, we're gonna have them load up in here and we're gonna drive in right in front of the stand, act like we're refeeding again and hopefully trigger something to come out out of curiosity a little bit earlier in the day. Jack will drive the golf cart down afterwards, park it there so they'll be all ready and We'll meet back up here at the barn and head to the same stand we were at earlier. Got the shot on the unicorn buck. We got about 30 minutes till dark. We're gonna head up to the barn here to meet Mark and get out and track this thing pretty soon. It looks like a pretty good shot and it's pretty exciting. It was a tough spot because right when the deer came out, he saw me immediately from where he was, literally the worst spot possible. Um, but Earl noticed when he stomped, he was ready to shoot or he was gonna take off running, so he did. Made a good call, and I think we got a buck. watching this guy for the last two months on trail cam and didn't work on opening day because of the winds 
but today it played out actually came in right after we were feeding today we put a little buck bourbon down and this guy came in twice called him unicorn for obvious reasons first deer off bootleggers ridge I'm pretty dandy <laughs> thank you rat no it's a heck of a deer still got his summer coat on it's starting to get a little bit of winter hair and i can tell you he lost his velvet six days ago because i've been watching him like crazy I'm gonna see if some of dad's luck doesn't rub off on me. I'm gonna sit in the stand that he was successful on the unicorn buck last night. The deer with the kicker off the G2 still showed up again last night, about two hours after we got out of there. Unfortunately, the deer we were sitting on the last couple of days, that big eight, I think maybe a little nocturnal. So we're gonna give him a break and the big brow tine deer hasn't been anywhere to be seen. So we're gonna see if dad's luck doesn't rub off. We gave that deer a couple hours we're back out here we had marked where the arrow was and where he went in to the woods and i just felt like the hit was a tad high and i wanted to give him plenty of time so we gave him a couple hours we're gonna go went back looked at footage the exit looks just about perfect so it may have just been mind playing tricks where the entrance was so we'll see if we can't find him here hopefully he's not laying too far right here <laughs> we can bring the truck right to him. Oh my goodness. Ah. Wow, there's no shrinkage on that deer. Wow. Look at the mass. Oh, all that waiting and he was right here. Not 50, 50 yards. Oh my gosh. been watching this deer on trail cam the last two months and he was running with dad and what I didn't see is that he had this unicorn point right there too and he is way bigger than I thought he was on trail cam a heck of a deer still in full velvet and I thought that shot was high but it was perfect he didn't go more than 60 yards that is a God of a Kentucky velvet deer right there. Kentucky giant velvet whitetail. This is part of the reason why I got the farm here and it is paid off. Opening weekend, Dad and I both got great deer off this farm. Just a stud of an eight point.
Same yeah. flag as the one from yesterday. No <laughs> yeah. About the same time. Came and chase him. Run behind some does. That deer's all over 160. That's what I said. I fed 160. Mark. Um, it's so hard to get pictures that they don't ever do. Deer. No. <laughs> no. Two tracks. Like old logging mm -hmm. road. No, yeah. So we came out.